let's not forget, let's not forget, I've never met Bill Cosby, so I'm not defending him. But let's just remember that he has a valuable legacy that I can't just throw away. I remember that he's the first black man to ever win an Emmy in television. I also remember that he's the first guy to make a cartoon with black characters where their lips and noses were drawn proportionally. <laughs> I remember that he had a television show that got numbers equivalent to the Super Bowl every Thursday night. And I remember that he partnered up with a clinical psychologist to make sure that there was not one negative image of African Americans on his show. I'm telling you, this is no small thing. I've had a television show. I wouldn't have done that shit. <laughs> Gave tens of millions of dollars to African American institutions of higher learning, and it's directly responsible for thousands of black kids going to college. Not just the ones he raped. <laughs> Here comes the kicker. You ready? Here's the fact that I heard but haven't confirmed. I heard that when Martin Luther King stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and said he had a dream, he was speaking into a PA system that Bill Cosby paid for. Do you understand what I'm saying? The point is this. He rapes, but he saves. And he saves more than he rapes, but he probably does rape. Thank you very much. Good night. The fourth time I met O.J. Simpson. The fourth time is not the funniest time, but it was the last time I'd see the Jukes. For some reason, I was at the Kentucky Derby. It's a very long story. This is right after I quit Chappelle's show in spectacular fashion. There was a party hosted by Michael Jordan and every athlete I'd ever admired was in that room. Yes. And then I saw a familiar face by the bar, standing there, drinking alone. It was Chris Tucker. Now, you have to remember, at this time, we were both technically missing. And we went over and we're talking with one another and motherfuckers were amazed to see us together. Seeing me and Chris Tucker at that point would be like seeing Bigfoot riding a unicorn. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that's what you were saying. And then, through all the gawkers, a familiar face pushed to the crowd. Here he was again. The juice. He had his camera ready. He was like, Dave, Chris, Good to see you guys. Hey, come on guys, let's all get together for a picture. And at the same time, me and Chris were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Juice, my career is too flimsy to survive a picture with you. <laughs> That's the end, good night. Just wanted to acknowledge for the real comedy fans, we can't not acknowledge it. We lost a fucking juggernaut in comedy this week. So I'm just shouting out the family and friends of Gary Shanley. Much love to you guys. My sincerest of condolences. And for the hip hop fans in the building, put two friends up in the air. 
Yeah. I'm trying to call a question, my man, Fight Dog, may you rest in peace forever and ever. Thank you for that beautiful music. Good night, everybody. Thank you.